Hello everyone, it's Robin Moser and Emma Terranova here again for season three of the Tipsy Realtor. We're super excited because today we're doing a super classy fancy drink mm. called the Empress Gin and Lychee Gimlet. And then we're going to talk about water penetration and a lot of people will wonder how does a gimlet go with penetration? <laughs> <laughs> for a basic. Especially, it's, it's, once you guys see it, it's a beautiful drink. It is. And such a not sexy topic. <laughs> no, but it's because of the fact that they think the word gimlet actually derives from a tool that is sharp and penetrating, and therefore they think that the taste of the gimlet is a penetrating and cocktail sharp. and sharp cocktail, and therefore yeah. that's why we thought this drink went along with our subject of basement water prevention yeah. and penetration in your home. Don't ask us how, but that's what the history of Gimlet is yeah. from 1928 or something, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so, understand, we don't drink while we make our seasons, but sometimes it sounds like we do. But yeah. I was away in Florida, and I have a present And that's why she's still in the, on the Florida, you know, <laughs> summer Very tan. <laughs> yeah. So... I have a present. Okay. This is called a party relief oral <laughs> spray, homeopathic oral spray. Oh, oral spray. And okay. it's this thing you spray in your mouth three times, and mm. it's supposed to help cure hangovers. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. And I it, will save it for one of those uh, tipsy realtor when it's like really busy. <laughs> <laughs> the really boozy Drink. tipsy yeah. realtor. Well, thank you, Robin. I am definitely gonna try that out. You'll have to let me know how it goes. Because yeah. supposedly you can buy them online, but I got them at a store down there and they look super cool. I took the one for myself called Brain Power, so now I'm going to eat most of the realm. <laughs> yeah. That's why she wants to keep me sharp. Yeah. <laughs> no hangovers fan anymore. Okay. Oh, Thank you, Robin. Thank you. So now we're back to the cocktail. Take me to Florida. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. We need to do a live on set. <laughs> oh, my God. We need, like, girls to show. That's like, right. Tips your realtor trip. We should totally yeah. do that. We need a tips your realtor trip. And we, we need to that. blog what we're drinking in during yeah, our trip. Oh, exactly. my God. We're going to start fund me <laughs> <laughs> for tips your realtor because that doesn't come cheap. Okay. But let's start with this beautiful drink. All right. So we're going to start very simply with this cocktail. And you're going to start with two ounces of Empress Gin. Empress Gin is actually from Victoria. Mm -hmm. Local? It's, yeah, it's a very local. It's very famous for their Empress Gin drinks because they are so beautiful. Yes, it's, it's a one of my favorite, actually, cocktail gins. Like, they produce all different kinds of color, depends what yeah. you mix it, between blue to purple to pink. So, super gorgeous. It is. And then also, too, is with the... It also makes, like, a stunning cocktail... It's local for those people who love to promote our local industries and really push for that. Sorry. I need to upgrade our bar. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, so we're adding some lychee juice now, syrup, right? Was that lychee? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. No, that was lychee. I put okay. the wrong amount in. Sorry. I'm really getting back into the swing of things. Florida was a great. Maybe you need to get that spray. I know. So right. That's the brain power is not helping. And then we are adding some freshly squeezed lime juice now. Oh, do we need to use this too? That's next. Oh, that's next. Okay. I like these. I got these from a place in downtown Calgary on 11th Avenue, a, cook, a cooking store. And it's like a little shot glass, but it has mm. everything on it. So teaspoons, it has uh, like everything. Excellent. So it's kind of nice that yeah. way. But yeah, so we put all the ingredients that you see on the screen into the shaker. shaker and now we're gonna put this on and I did want to shake on the last show. See? She did such a good job shaking. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. Now the one oh, thing do the glass. Yeah so the yeah, one thing decorate. with the glass is so if you guys don't know what the lychee looks like in the wild, this the is wild. what they are. Like well some people just think they yeah. come those like you know nice big beautiful white. But they like a fuzzy nuts and <laughs> Your yes. penetrating show. Your penetrating show. Fuzzy hands and the penetrating show. You have show. to open them up to get the white fruit, uh, which is going to be our garnish. And while I was talking about fuzzy nuts, uh, Robin did sugar the rim on the glass. Yeah, and that's an option. So if you don't want to have the oh, sugar so there, gorgeous. you don't have to. But it certainly is an option that you can sugar your rim and do that so that you can have kind of a little bit of a fancier thing. And then because you're using gin, which is a very botanical kind of drink, you can really use flowers, edible flowers within your mm -hmm. cocktail, which 
Orchids are edible, so we have the I'm edible lift orchid mine. in here. It's, or she need them really full today. Or so, I've used lavender. Lavender. Purple with purple and pink. Exactly. Super pretty. Cheers. It's just too pretty to drink almost. Almost. I was gonna say never is it too pretty to drink. Mm. Delicious. It's very nice. And it is, like you talk about a piercing flavor. So lychee is such a mm. such a um such a kind of it's mild. sweet, but it's a mild sweet. It it's is. not like that syrupy. Even we add some cane sugar syrup. Mm -hmm. It's um this is a very sharp lime forward, I would say. Yeah. Has a little hint of sweetness, kind of at the almost at the end. Yeah. But not overly sweet. So if you like kind of your drinks maybe tart. Yeah. I would say it's more on that side. This is a this is when I'll probably beautiful for Clint tonight. Super beautiful yeah. and refreshing. It is. A uh, great starter. It's definitely good before the dinner because it gets your palate like a lot. Yeah. yeah. Also, what's nice about it too is it really does have. Sorry, first time with our first drink. <laughs> it also has a very beautiful like if you're using the flowers. I always love flowers to kind of decorate and I garnish with. Go my orchid. Oh no, the orchid's dead. Oh my god. So I'll just like put this you on. You can just put it on that on way. the side. Yeah. yeah. But, so it is nice that way, because once you start putting flowers in as a garnish, <laughs> it just, it really does make a much more beautiful kind of look, more fancy look to a drink. And for me, all I did is I actually grabbed lav lavender from my garden outside, yes. and I took two lychee nuts and just skewered them with the lavender. Yeah. So. And by the way, if you cannot find the lychee nuts, uh, I like... <laughs> The fuzzy one does here uh, in the store because they are quite seasonal. Actually, this is, yeah. they just start showing up at the stores. You can go to uh, a canned um, fruit fruit can department, and they do come in a can. They do, yeah, in own juice, I believe. So, well, yeah, I'll just say in Costa Rica, yeah, they sell these on the side of the road oh, almost wow. year round. Next time you should bring them from Costa Rica. <laughs> I don't even allow. Mm. Maybe that's a live location we need to do. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, it would be easier. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. We're not very sharp today. We need more gimlets. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about penetrating mm. water in your basement and how can you prevent that? Because obviously getting water in your basement is huge. Yeah. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is that concrete is porous. Mm -hmm. So there is a point, like we saw in 2013, that it doesn't matter what you do, the water is going to start flowing into your basement. Now, a lot of you were very, very lucky that you actually had, um, what was it? It was, uh, oh, you didn't have what was called ground, ground water. water. Ground yeah, water. You had it actually coming up through your sewer system because our sewer system got backed up before the water started penetrating the foundations. And that was actually a, really great for a lot of people, but you're, Concrete is porous, so there is a point where if there's enough water around your basement, it will seep in even if you've done nothing wrong. Right, and you know, I always tell one of the things, like, and I do it with my homes, like every time we have a huge storm where we got um, huge rain, especially the ones that just kind of go at it. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of very <laughs> strong words in this one. Um, it's good to go and just like walk around your basement and check because the thing is just because you didn't have water in the basement before doesn't mean you cannot have it again because as I said, it is sometimes comes over time where the seal around the basement, the concrete, uh, the basement concrete does wear out and you find like that little crack and it starts seeping in. So check for cracks even like during the summer or after summer when we had you know, for coming from the winter, it was cold, then it got hot. Check before we go into fall yeah. season for any deterioration around the bottom of your basement for cracks and things like that. But keep in mind, so a lot of basements nowadays will have the actual foundation of concrete and you'll have parging on top of the concrete, mm -hmm. which is like a finishing product. So you're trying to look below and behind that parging because having a crack in your parging does not mean that there's a crack in yes. your foundation. Now, you can hire people with these um, 
thermo guns to come in and take a look and they'll go through your basement and look for cold spots and usually that's where they can tell that there's maybe water penetration. But if you're wandering around your house and you see water pooling near your foundation, you need to start doing something to make sure that that water is flowing away from. And the biggest thing and the biggest thing we see, oh my gosh, so often in houses is downspouts not down. Yes, and I get it. You don't need to have them down all the time. I mean, the, in a perfect world, you want to like look at your weather channel yeah. and then go put them down before the rain. But a lot of people don't think that way. They put them up and they leave them up basically for the rest of the year. And I do see a lot of when the spouts never been down wow. or they have been broken and not fixed. And they yeah. just directly pouring into um, the soil and the foundation of the basement or the garage. Yeah. And it's not only creating a hole in your but I have seen where it was like a space between yeah. the garage driveway slabs and the soil like it's like missing because it's completely yeah. washed out. And that's one of the ways like that actually water does get in your basement, especially in the older homes I yeah. find. New homes, I do find, like, I, I have seen they've survived, like, for many years, but with the older homes, like, 1950s and 60s, and I had experienced it myself, one heavy rain, downspouts were not in, and there's suddenly, like, a puddle in the basement where there have never been uh, any water before. Absolutely. So, the downspout, super important to have that. And not, to add on to Anna's point, is keeping your gutters clean of debris because your downspouts and your gutters, if they're full of crap, they're going to start pouring the water over instead of flowing it That's down. That's a technical term. Full of crap? Yeah. Yeah. And we talk about leaves and yeah. things. So you, and so you need to clean those out on a, on a constant basis. It should be an annual, like I do it in the spring and I do it in the fall. Wow, I mean, you're very good. Well, I am. You wanna come to my house? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So those are the kind of things that you should be looking at and making sure it's flowing. The other thing that I hate just because again, it's, I obviously I'm paranoid, yeah. is that when you're getting into that spring where it freezes and it thaws and it freezes and it thaws and it freezes and it thaws, is that yeah. your downspout can get frozen and you can get big ice blocks in your downspouts and now everything's flowing out onto your foundation and around your foundation. And I've even gone as far as taking a blow dryer and thawing out my downspout so yeah. it flows down because I'm so worried about the seeing that penetration of water into our foundation. Well, so, and that's a, like, that's a thing, like, because if the downspouts are not cleaned, the water goes over and you have those huge yeah. icicles hanging out throughout the house, which is not good for downspouts uh, at all. And of course it creates a hazard if they fall down. Yeah. And, things like that. and because we are in Calgary and we get those large dumps of snow, try and shovel the snow away from your house, mm. away from your foundation. Don't leave it <laughs> there. The neighbor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't leave it all piled up. But the other thing too is, so a lot of people don't realize, but the way that your houses are built, all the houses are built so that the grade always slopes away from the house. Well, that's what it should be. I have, should be. I have seen tons of, especially in a city in fields, the builders sometimes don't grade properly. And that's just something you can address either after purchasing in the house or with a builder right away. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to make sure that even over time, because obviously over time, dirt sinks, that you want to go back and you want to build up those grades so that it's always sloping away so that water is flowing yeah. away from your house. So those are tiny little things that you can do. There are some amazing companies out there like basement systems, although they get a huge lineup, especially in the spring. So having them come in and do an annual check isn't a horrible idea. Mm -hmm. To have them come in, do an annual check, have them look at things, double check that there's nothing going on in your foundation. Because the problem is, is once crap starts going on in your foundation. That's also a technical term. Crap. I know. I'm really into crap today. <laughs> but it is, it is an utterly, highly expensive fix. Yes. Uh, again, uh, maintenance will cost money, but it's nothing compared to the damage that water will cost yeah. uh, in the future. And especially if you Mold. don't catch things in time. Yeah. Again, like, you know, if uh, basements start feeling musty, like, you know, because sometimes we don't always see the water, yeah. but because it's sitting somewhere very slowly in some corner that you generally don't hang out, if you, especially if your basement is more like a storage and yeah. is covered with things, 
So um, yes, if you notice any weird smells, if you notice, notice any like white residue, like you know that water leaves like the, yeah. that calcium, fluorescence, yeah, uh, definitely uh, pay attention to those things that is not normal and shouldn't be there. Um, you can yeah. also do things like installing a sump pump. So a lot of oh, times yes. when we show houses and there's sump pump, people think that that means that there's a water problem. No, that's preventative. It is a preventative measure, which you can do. And installing a sump mm -hmm. pump, because you have a sump pump, the intention is obviously you want to make sure annually that your sump pump is working. But if it's not working, that's when you have a problem. Because well, unfortunately, yeah. no one tests it annually. And the only time you find out that you have a water problem in your <laughs> sump pump isn't working, working is, you have water problem. is because you have water in your basement. Yeah. And again, with the sump pumps, you know, with Calgary, there are our communities that are more prone to have that underground uh, water flow. So generally, in, in this day and age, like our builders are really good here. They start uh, putting those sump pumps automatically, especially if they have tested for the groundwaters. Now that any attached products, so like your duplex, your infills, your townhomes, uh, they are required by law to have sump pumps. So it's um, something that has been um, around the last few years. But uh, definitely if you suspect the groundwaters and you feel you want to be more secure, get a sump pump. Okay, now speaking yeah. of liquids, mm. we're giving away a super cool product. It goes with the uh, balls penetration and pumping. Exactly! <laughs> All right. We're giving the Bar Butler liquor pump. So, like, if you seriously, like... we could not make this up like, <laughs> strategically. But here it is, uh, Bar Butler. It, it's a it's a pump uh, for, liquor. for liquid for liquor. And oh, and apparently, like, see, like it's showing here. It's a glass. I think it looks so it's, cool. Yeah, you can pump whiskey right into your glass. Exactly, or gin, gin or yeah. beer. Or anything you yeah. want. So when you got your friends over, if you can just squeeze it, put an ounce into their drink. You don't have to think about it. All that kind of stuff. It's a super cool product. But yeah, you can make this beautiful drink into the pump and just Ooh, to pour it in. That's a good idea. It's like a, a different version of the jug or what do you call it? That's right. right. Yeah. All right. But you have to like and share our show in order to win. And. The, every time you like and share the show, you get put in for the prize, and it will be, be drawn at the first show in October. Mm -hmm. And we like pretty much through half of our, uh, September now. I know, it's amazing how yeah. fast it went. So we have one show next week, and that's it. It's and October. Then it's, and then it's October. So you have basically this week and next week to get entered by liking our shows, you know, sharing with your friends, invite guests to watch it live and this liquor pump will be yours. All right, but you can also find yes. this show on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, obviously, if you're watching us here, or on our handy dandy LinkedIn. And if you are looking at buying or selling a home, you can always give us a call at the number on the screen. We are always here to help. We're always here to answer questions. There is no question that is a bad question. And you know what? Calling us doesn't mean you're obligated. It just means that you're calling someone who's going to give you the best advice that is to your benefit and not to ours because we know it's important that when you're making such big decisions like real estate, that you make the best decision for you. And you guys have to remember, you know, that our full market is generally one of the best markets after spring market. Uh, the weather is beautiful. It's not snowing yet. It's fantastic for those sexy photos. That's right. Now, next week okay. we have a special We're guest. Oops, hang on. Next week oh. we have a special guest coming on. He is the tipsy cook. He is going to come on and he's yeah. going to teach us how to make an envy cocktail. And he's going to talk about the best kitchens and how to spot them. Oh, well, are we looking forward to having tipsy cook? With the Tipsy Realtors. I That's think right. it's a great combo. It is. So, thank you so much for watching our show. Call us if you have any real estate questions. Your friends, your family, your co-workers, tell them to phone us. I hope you guys have a great day. And enjoy the last little bit of summer. Oh, it's fantastic. Enjoy, guys. Thank Bye. you.